Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. The Warzone meta here in MW3 Warzone has been interesting up until this point. Obviously, the first couple of weeks now have been filled with a lot of drama when it comes to the meta itself. The game launched, we were just trying to figure out what guns really stood out, and it became very obvious and very apparent that the MTZ Interceptor and the Bass B were broken. Those things were frying, dominating everyone at all ranges, and of course, those were adjusted, those were nerfed to make them a little bit more in line with some of the other top tier weapons luckily they weren't nerfed into the ground and they're not completely useless now in fact they're both uh you know definitely top tier options still and then after that shortly after that the snake shot meta returned for about 24 hours or so before that was basically vaulted and removed from the game while they work on a fix for that so the meta within warzone already has evolved a lot this year and it's going to continue to do so over the course of time but just initially here when you start to break down the in-depth details and stats of a lot of the different guns in the game a new problem sort of starts to reveal itself and with that today i wanted to break down what exactly this problem is with the warzone meta and what it likely means for a lot of the major meta updates going forward as well so as we get into it if you enjoy the video do me a favor and drop a like on it much love to everyone who does take the time to do so and if you're new to the channel or you simply have not subscribed yet feel free to hit that sub button turn on those post notifications because every single day i got you covered with news updates patch notes meta breakdowns every Everything in COD is right here, so feel free to hit that sub button and turn on those post notifications. So obviously outright, the gunplay and the engagements here in MW3 Warzone is drastically different than what we had within Warzone 2. Warzone 2 was kind of awkward all year long just because of how the guns performed with their, uh, you know, random weapon sway that caused recoil patterns to be a little bit inconsistent. There was a lot of visual recoil, so you always had to burn attachments focusing on that. Obviously, with uh, no classic minimap, you could get away with using a lot of different compensators that weren't just suppressors. And so everything felt different there as opposed to this year where we've got a lot of low recoil laser beams. The classic minimap is back. There's detailed stats now, so we get a much better, uh, you know, view of what exactly is going on and how we're changing our guns with specific attachments in very minor or in some cases, very major ways. But what this has led to is a very interesting state of the time to kill in Warzone. Now, obviously, we are at 300 total health. You have 150 base health and you have 150 armor. So a max of 300 health, which we've seen in Warzone before, that resulted in some very balanced TTKs. And that's sort of what the community has, uh, you know, come to understand and come to want over these several years of Warzone now. We started off with a super fast TTK back in Warzone 1 in MW 2019, and it slowly uh, slowed down, slowly slowed down, weird to say. It, you know, got a lot slower over time throughout Cold War then into Vanguard. And then Warzone 2 started super fast TTK, way too fast, reverting everything we just learned for the past two and a half years in Warzone 1. But then over time, towards the end of Almazra and towards the end of Warzone 2, we had a much slower TTK and things were generally well balanced across the close and long range. But there has been sort of another reversion here and some regression in terms of that progress that is likely causing you some nuisances in game, some annoyance in game in some of your gunfights. This tweet from JGod sums it up pretty well. Uh, he said, now the true game data has most of the MW2 weapons on the site alongside all of the general MW3 guns as well with their time to kill stats. The close range is generally in a good spot, and this is absolutely true. There's a lot of really good options between your MW2 SMGs, your MW3 SMGs, your shotguns across both games. Even some pistols this year with like the Core 45 and the Renetti are pretty good for close range as well. Some more aggressive rifles. There's a lot of really solid choices there, and the close range TTK is not generally too fast by any means. It's definitely on par with what we've seen before. But it's safe to say the TTKs overall are much faster than at the end of Warzone 2 Almazra for long range. And Jay actually gives some examples here of uh, the stats that we had last year versus currently in game. Towards the end of Almazra, the majority of the weapons over range were killing in 900 milliseconds to about 1100 milliseconds, which is about the prime spot for the time to kill in Warzone. It gives you some good time to react, but you're not going to spend minutes on end fighting someone because they just keep healing over and over and over again. That's a very balanced TTK. 
However, so far here in Urzikstan, we're looking at about a 750 millisecond TTK. And then on the, uh, you know, longer side of things, it's about 900. Now that is just an average. And I'll talk about some outliers here in just a moment, but that's obviously much, much faster than where we were just a couple of months ago. And even list, for example, the M13B and MW2 gun balanced really well throughout Warzone 2 and towards the end was one of the better rifles in the game. It had an 1100 millisecond TTK towards the end on Almazra now we're looking at an 852 millisecond ttk on average so what they've done essentially here is that yes we do have better health in this game with a 300 total health but they've gone through and added more damage to these guns which basically negates the changes to health yeah you have more armor now or more plates whatever the case may be but there's also more damage to rip through those plates so we've now gone back again and gone from a state of having a really average TTK that was good for long range that made it so that gunfights are competitive but not overwhelming you have a chance to react to now where there are certain situations where you absolutely can get fried and a lot of this probably has to do with those obvious balance changes that they made initially to all MW2 guns they changed the core damage values the range values the velocity values of every MW2 gun in the game and they might have overstepped on some like for instance the M13B which is so drastically different now that said it's a great rifle right now but it does sort of uh you know feed into the fact that the TTK over long range is definitely not in as good of a place as it was before but there's also you know negative ends to this as well other weapons were overcorrected. like for instance the uh iso hemlock really really slow the rpk basically no reason to use it whatsoever these have terrible ttk stats by comparison but it's not just exclusive to mw2 weapons either you look at some mw3 guns and your initial thought might be okay these are all super low recoil very laser beam like uh weapons they all are probably gonna fry and that's maybe what's feeding into this super fast ttk well not necessarily the mcw which is one of the lowest and easiest recoil weapons in the game awful ttk over range it's one of the slowest killing guns in the game so you do have these outlier guns that yes uh, are, are easy to use but they don't kill quick whatsoever and then you have those guns that are you know filling up the majority of the average there which is a little bit too fast considering where we got to last year and where the community you know finally landed on hey a lot of these guns feel really competitive right now this is where the overall time to kill should be so what exactly does this mean for the future well sledgehammer has already confirmed that as we get into season one reloaded we're going to start to see a lot more fine tuning updates focusing in on very specific things on certain guns to balance them out more but ultimately because we have so many different guns viable in the long range right now that are feeding into this faster ttk it likely means that we're going to see a lot of major updates done to velocities and ranges and damages to bring them back in line with what we sort of had towards the end of last year and sort of towards the end of war zone one which means basically weaker all around i don't think we're going to see much change in weapon behavior because a lot of the mw3 weapons are built to be low recoil because that's sort of where the community leans in terms of its wants and uh how they want guns to behave and feel over time going back to war zone one obviously low visual recoil easy to use much more welcoming and much more forgiving than war zone two which was not well received in terms of high visual recoil a lot of rng there so these fine tuning meta updates likely are going to add in those uh you know extra damage drop offs to guns so that long range ttk now becomes a little bit slower they're going to reduce velocity maybe in some cases to make you work a little bit more to get those long range kills since obviously all the you know testing and all the data that's been accumulated over the past couple of years of warzone has led all the devs to believe that that slower ttk that you know a uh, thousand millisecond one second long ttk there over long range is more of that sweet spot and being that we're just ahead of that it does mean some changes likely are going to be made there specifically to the long range meta as opposed to the close range which like i said for the most part is very well balanced so that's likely where we're going to trend in terms of our future meta updates with season one reloaded season two season two reloaded loaded so on and so forth the devs have also confirmed as we've mentioned in previous videos that mw2 guns over time are going to see some overhauls so that they behave more like mw3 guns and that'll ultimately feed more into this long
long range time to kill which then means we'll probably need extra updates on top of that when we do change weapons to be more accurate and easy to use so the long range in particular is probably going to be a major major focus for several seasons to come now to really balance it out and it's interesting to see you know based off of jay god's original tweet just how different it is from the end of almazra to the start of warzone and mw3 on urzikstan right now but that being said that's gonna wrap things up for this one if you enjoyed the video do me a favor drop a like on it it would be seriously appreciated and if you're new here you want to guarantee every single day you are up to date with all things going on between mw3 and warzone be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out